Hi everyone, welcome to tutorial 3 of the introductory Python for image processing series. Now in this video, let's have a very quick look at uh, a couple of image processing operations using ImageJ, Zen, and Appear Cloud platforms. So let me jump into ImageJ and again you probably most of you worked with ImageJ and you can download it it's free Zen is also again as we are talking about these software platforms Zen can also be downloaded I'll talk about that in a second but let's have a quick look at ImageJ now let's open an image and again images come in many file formats and I have the same image in CZI and TIFF formats CZI is the call Zeiss image the Zeiss file format and I recommend working with the native image formats as much as possible because for example call Zeiss uh, Zeiss actually put in a lot of effort into packing the right metadata that's useful for you to better handle your images now, uh, we do understand that, of course, uh, uh, you can uh, change the file formats because maybe the, the software platform that you're using cannot accept that file format, right? I mean, in Python, you can read the CZI images. Uh, image J can also read CZI images. But if you have to convert your file, please convert that into either OME TIFF, okay? Open Microscopy Environment TIFF file format. You can use Image J to convert that. You can use Python to convert your images. You can also use uh, Zeiss's uh, Zen software to save your images as uh, any other format, including o OME TIFFs. Uh, or TIFF file format. Do not save them as JPEG. So here I have a, a TIFF image. Let's go ahead and open it in image J. I just dragged it onto the image J uh, uh, UI over there. And let me keep this image J open because I want you to read the numbers down here, up here, wherever my mouse is, okay? Uh, when I move the mouse. Right here it says that, okay, the uh, blue value is 80, green is 73, and red is 8. That means it's more blue and green than red, right? So if I move my cursor to the reddish area, you can see now I have more red, 141, uh, a little bit of green and not much blue. So this gives you an idea. Why are we seeing three values uh, up there? Because this image is an RGB image. So we are actually seeing red, green, and blue values. You can convert this. A basic image operation is converted into 8-bit gray. Now when I put my cursor, you only see one value, 131. or uh, 68 but the problem here is you lost all the color information which is very useful uh, for example for image segmentation if you want to segment the nuclei the DAPI channel out then you lost that information with this gray image okay so this is a basic image operation in image J and Zen let's load the same image in Zen I'm just gonna go ahead and drag it of course uh, if I drag the CZI image I can also do the same but let's stick with the same image now in case you wonder what this Zen is, and if you have never worked with Zen, or if you want to get your hands onto Zen, go ahead and, uh, do I have it? Yeah, under uh, Google search type Zeiss Zen Lite. Typically, that's the first uh, link that you'll find, and we'll try to leave the link as part of this description of this video. But uh, Zen Lite is the free version of Zen, and it has, even the free version has a lot of tools for image processing and image analysis. Now, if you actually add, uh, want to add any of the purchase features, maybe your lab already has them, uh, I mean, already have these uh, purchase features, or you can add them uh, like uh, machine learning based image segmentation, analysis tools, uh, your own macro environment. There's a lo lot more you can actually do with paid versions deconvolution, co-localization. So all of this uh, additional stuff you can absolutely do, but most of the basic image processing operations should be able to, uh, uh, you should be able to handle using the free version, which is exactly what I'm using right now. So this is the free version. I'm not using any of the paid functionalities right now, okay? So uh, here it is. Now I have the same image and down here, you can see the histogram for red, green, and blue. You can manipulate the histogram. You can manipulate the histogram for each channel, each color space, if, I mean, each color if you want. Now, uh, let's actually do something. Let's actually, I mean, on the left-hand side, you can see there's a whole bunch you can do. You can adjust a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, you can change geometric, you can sharpen, smooth. Uh, a lot of utility functions are down here. Uh, I usually get a bit lazy and I go ahead and search for, okay, I want to split the channels. As you can see, I already did the search over there, but let's go ahead and do it one more time. Split, split into RGB. So I'll just hit apply and it's going to split my image almost instantaneously into red, green, and blue. So this is the red channel, this is the green channel, and this is the blue channel. Now you can see the blue 
uh, the cells are uh, segmented already. That's because the sample has been prepared such a way that all nuclei show up in blue color, which is DAPI stained in this example, in this case. Um, so this is basically how you would do it in uh, in Zen and in Appear. Again, in case you wonder what Appear is, you can actually uh, uh, go to www.apeer.com and Appear is this initiative by Zeiss to actually bring the community together so we can share the code in a very usable way. What do we mean by usable? Let's say you become masters of Python after a few training classes and I bet you will be at least to some extent you know uh, uh, good at uh, Python coding now you want to share your code with someone else so they can actually use it in a very usable way so this can be very useful and you can automate your workflows of course that's the core advantage of uh, appear again this is not appear tutorials if you want you can go and sign up and you can test it out and it's free for uh, academia and nonprofits so please go ahead and sign up so once you sign up you can see that a whole bunch of modules mostly developed by uh, a peer team, but also contributed by third party, like other researchers like you. Uh, and uh, there are a lot of image processing tools, you know, think of these as plugins or macros, you know, that are pre-written, but in a very usable way. So we have shading correction, we have edge detectors and a whole bunch of stuff. So let's uh, just do something simple. Let's actually do Gaussian. Uh, yeah, Gaussian filter. This is uh, smoothing for noise, right? So I can just go ahead and look at the description. I can create a workflow and I'll just call this Gaussian smoothing. And uh, I'm uh, right now I'm taking individual elements and creating a workflow. So in this example, I have only one, but you can imagine adding another one. After the Gaussian filter, I want to perform, I don't know, uh, sharpening, unsharp mask or something. Go ahead and add it. So you can just go ahead and add these and that's it. That's how you create a workflow. So once you have this workflow, just define your input image. I believe I already have my osteosarcoma as part of my account. Everyone gets 100 GB of free uh, storage. So osteosarcoma, 16 bit, 8 bit. Yeah, there you go. You can add any number of images for batch processing. And for Gaussian filter, let's leave a kernel size of five and five, go ahead and start it. And this runs in the cloud. You don't have to do anything. In fact, you can even close the browser and the workflow still continues. If I just log on to my Appear account, I should be able to uh, uh, track it. Okay, so this is how uh, you can actually perform image processing tasks in various image processing software, which is great. Right now, why do you need to learn Python programming? Well, in ImageJ, you can do whatever ImageJ lets you do, and it's limited by the resources that uh, you have on, on your computer, which is also true with Python. But with Python, once you master it, you can actually customize things uh, to your specific job. Right. The same thing with appear. Right. I mean, where do these modules come from? Where do these modules come from? Someone has to write them and you can write your own modules and put them under your own workspace and create your own, uh, 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 you know, customized modules that you can use. And if you want, you can publish so others can actually uh, view it. So uh, the essence of this uh, entire tutorial is there are many ways you want to operate you know you can actually operate and uh, it's up to you what works for you okay we all like different types of uh, work style whether i want to automate my uh, image analysis in that case i would like to use something like a peer or do i want uh, the ability to handle like large images and tiles and everything in that case i would and get real-time feedback in that case i'd work with zen because i can actually literally you know uh, open these tiled images time series and all that and manipulate or do you want to do some basic image j type of operations or you already have a macro in image j that actually does some top type of analysis for you then you can go ahead and use image j but starting next tutorial, we are going to focus on Python and how we can do some of the operations that I just showed you very easily with a, just a few lines of code in Python. OK, thank you very much for your attention. And let's actually meet in the next tutorial and let's start writing a few lines of code to do something real. Thank you.